This video will be the first in a new playlist that I'll be setting up on my YouTube channel called Python Tips and Tricks. For this Python tip, we're going to look at how, as coders, we can make it easier to read large numbers typed into a Python program. These three numbers are the first three numbers in the natural number system, often called the counting system. And we can see that we're adding them all up to give us the result of six. And what we have here is a series that will take each of the numbers in term as they appear in the natural numbers, add them up, and we get the result of six. Now, this is the Python program that will add up the first three numbers as shown above. And what we can see we've done, we're setting a running total to zero. And here I've got a for loop, and it's saying for item in the range, and in the brackets you can see it's one comma four. Now, that means that what the for loop will produce are numbers from one through to, but not including the four. So in other words, the range here will include the numbers one, two, and three. So every time we go into the loop, this will pick one of these numbers. The first time into the loop, we obviously pick this one. So when we come onto this line, the running total we know is zero because we set it here. And then we add to it the item that we're currently accessing, which is this one here. So zero plus one becomes one. So the running total here now has the value of 1. In other words, the running total has altered from the 0 to the 1. And of course, we now go back into the loop. And on this occasion, we choose the 2. And it's been added to the running total, which we now have to remember is 1. That gives us 3 which is then assigned to this running total. So the running total now stores the value of three. We then go into the for loop one more time, and on this occasion, the item has picked up this value. So the three is added to whatever the running total is at the moment. And of course, we know that is three because that's what it was set to the last time we went round this loop. So we get the value of six, which is assigned to the running total. On this line, we then print this list string the sum of the series is and we print out the running total as it was when we executed this line the last time we went into the for loop so the output we would expect is shown here the sum of the series is six I would like to emphasize the following point. Here you can see we have the first three counting numbers. And to get those first three, this is what we had to use, this range here. But look in the brackets, we pass in 1, 4. So we always have this one here being one bigger than the number of numbers we need in the series. And here, if you look, you can see we've got 1, 2, and 3. There we have three numbers that's why this here has to be four because the range doesn't go as far as the four now here you can see we're using the first four numbers in the natural numbers so when we add up these numbers we get the result of 10. now the python program to achieve this is shown here and there's only been one change to the program and that's here you can see we've changed this to the five from the four it was for the last example we looked at that means that we'll go around this for loop one more time and that last time through we'll obviously add this four to the addition of what this lot was which we know from the last program was six so when this program executes what we would expect to see at the output is the sum of the series is 10. And of course, here we can see we have taken the first four counting numbers. So to actually allow access to those first four, we put in the range function here, one to five, because remember five is the stop value. We don't use it. We only use up to, but not including the five. In this example, you can see that I'm adding up the first 10 of the counting numbers. And what I would like you to think of before I show the program, what will be in the range function if I want to go from 1 through to 10? Well, I'll give you a moment to think about that. And now we'll look at that computer program and you can see in the range I've gone from 1 to 11 because remember it doesn't get as far as the 11. So it means that this for loop will now execute more times because obviously we're now adding up 10 of the first numbers in the counting number in the natural numbers and we can see we get uh, 
55 here when we run the program. Let's now consider this computer program and if you look at the range function you can see we're passing in 1 and 101. Now this will mean that this program will simply add up the first 100 of the counting numbers and the result we will get is shown here. If we now go on and have a look at this one you can see here I've changed the range from 1 to 1001 and this program will add up the first 1000 numbers and we can see the result here. Let's now consider this computer program and again let's look to the range function. This is the only thing I've altered and I've altered it in this position. I've put in a much bigger number. Now I'll let you have a look at that and you work out how big that number is. What does that represent? Hopefully you will agree it's not immediately obvious what this number is. If we were writing this out on a piece of paper doing some mathematics what we would find ourselves using would be the following. You can see it's 1 million and 1. This is pretty easy to spot and the reason it is easy to spot is we have these commas in. Now the trouble is if we were to attempt to use this here we've got the problem that commas have a special meaning to Python as you can see by the very comma that appears here inside the arguments we're sending to the range function and also here. So you cannot use a number that has these commas in. We can also if we're doing mathematics on a piece of paper use this. We can put a space in and we can easily see that uh, we've got one million and one again. Now Python will not accept the number as shown here with the spaces in. Of course Python will have no problem understanding this number. We other people might have the problem with it, the coders. So what we will see when we execute this program is we'll see the output of the addition of the first one million numbers. To make our life easier when we're writing our Python programs and when we're typing in large numbers we're allowed to use the following in Python and we've put in these underscores and the underscores you can see are in the position of the commas as we would write them out on a piece of paper and also they're in the position of the spaces that we might be tempted to use when we're writing out our mathematics on pieces of paper but in Python if we want to make the large numbers easy to read we simply use these underscores and looking at this number it's quite easy to see that that is one million and and one. So let's consider this computer program and you can see that I've put this number which is 1 million and 1 here and if I run the program you can see it gives us the same answer the same output as it did here when we use this value as part of the range function. Now this value and this are identical but hopefully you can see that this is a little bit easier to read than this one. So to emphasize matters, this is how we can use it in Python and it is the equivalent to this, how we would normally use it when we were writing out our mathematics on a bit of paper. Also if we look at this one here, this is equivalent to this, both of them represent 10 million. This one here, well both of them represent 100,918,145. Here's another program where I've got this very large number here. Now straight away I'm not quite sure what that is. I'd have to look very carefully to see where I would normally have the commas in this. Well, as I've already said we can't look to putting commas in when we're using Python to represent large numbers. But when this runs we're going to get this is the answer. And if I now were to rewrite the program and put in this number you can see that's 10 million and one and it's quite easy to spot and if I run this we can see that the output is identical. So using these does make the code easier to read. So if we go to a bigger number again 100 million and we consider how we would write that out these are the various ways. This is how we would write it on a piece of paper. We could use it like this in Python but I would suggest that's difficult to read and we can use it in this way where it is clearly 100 million. The use of the underscore when using large numbers can be very useful. Let's take an example of an electrical engineer who wishes to write a computer program and have the computer program continually use megawatts, 100 megawatts, 10 megawatts and so on and they decide rather than keep on typing in the numbers they're going to do this using a constant. Now in Python there is no such thing as a constant. You cannot define something to be a constant. Let me remind 
remind you what a constant is it is something that cannot have its value changed now in Python you have to use a variable as a constant which means it can be changed but you shouldn't change a constant so how do you know when you look at your code what is and is not a constant well you all agree that when you write code if you write a variable that's all uppercase then you are using that variable as a constant and it is never to be changed so if I wanted to represent megawatts in my computer program I could do the following I could simply write megawatt equals here you can see 1 million and a megawatt is 1 million watts if I now wanted to represent a larger amount of megawatt ie 10 megawatts I would use this here and there you can see I've typed in the number using the underscores and if I wanted a hundred megawatts then I would simply write a hundred megawatts and I'd use this number here now all of these are examples of constants in Python and all Python programmers realize that if it's all uppercase like this then we're dealing with a constant and you change their value at your own peril it's effectively saying here that throughout all my calculations when I want to use 1 million watts in other words a megawatt I can use this word here and if I want to use 10 megawatts I can use this word here but at no time should you ever change the value in these because they have been designed to represent the values you see when we have the declarations you can see here so if you look at all of the numbers that I've typed in here you can see they've all used the underscore which shows us how useful it is when we're declaring constants as you can see in the examples given here. They're just making our code easier to read. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.